This conference will now be recorded. Good morning. Uh, this is Converse 2's 2019 facility plan meeting with the school or the state construction department. And we'll introduce ourselves first. My name is Troy Decker. I'm in planning. Uh, my role within this process is quality control, making sure that we abide by all state statutes, rules and regs, capture everything we need, and give everybody voice within the facility planning process with both the district and the state. Uh, and then uh, to be able to uh, provide the correct information for reports uh, and uh, information and also um, budgetary recommendations to the School Facilities Commission, as well as the Select Committee Joint Appropriations Committee. I'm Charlie Kaufman. I uh, my role in the facility planning process to do all the reports and data analysis for every district, and also uh, whatever reports are needed. Amber Leach with planning uh, policy. Planning policy analyst, and my role in this is working with all of the documentation, getting it prepped, also working with the districts and preparation um, with the documents, making sure that they're ready for this uh, facility plan meeting today. Good morning, Brandon Finney. Uh, my role in the state construction department is to identify the project needs throughout the state for the school districts, compile the budgets that are applicable to each of those projects and then present those to the commission, select committee, governor, and the joint appropriations committee. Good morning, this is Bob Herzog. I'm the project manager for this district and I handle all the district's needs as far as ongoing projects and major maintenance items. And Paul is not there today, guys? That's correct. Okay, great. District, if you'd introduce yourselves, please. Yeah, this is Coley Shadrick, superintendent. Tammy Price, business manager. I'm Shane McCoy, I'm the maintenance director. You don't continue to be that correct. We can't really hear now. Okay. You guys can see my screen? Yes, Troy. Yes. 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 Okay, thank you. Uh, and I'll try to speak louder. I'm remote. I'm in Jackson uh, having some meetings here. So um, uh, so the audio uh, part of this, hopefully, it'll be good enough for us. If yeah, I need to speak up, let me know. So thank you again for joining us. Uh, the facility planning process over the years has really improved. It's been a very important process because it has to do with buildings. And when you talk about school district buildings, you're talking about educating students, and that's what it's about, and that's what we focus on. So with that then, uh, one of the things that Charlie's really improved on over the years is, is just uh, getting us some graphics. Uh, you, you, And I think I say this every year, but uh, you know, this this is really a written record of our our facility planning, where you guys are at on condition, and where your schools are at, and all that stuff. There's a changeover in our office as well as school districts. We want to make sure we have a continuum of information that flows uh, through uh, different personnel over the years, but uh, also is a very clear um, uh, communication tool for the governor's office, for legislators who may ask and request to look at your plan sometime in the future. So we want to make sure that we are fully, uh, and our commissioners, fully uh, aware of uh, the needs out there and make sure that we represent it accurately. So these are just your uh, various sites in, in uh, your school district. So uh, that just is a record. Um, it, and we've emphasized this now two years in a row. It's, row, it's so important that we uh, keep accurate information on data because database because that goes over to WDE and it means it impacts your block grant uh, payment. And so every year we have you review this and that check boxes. It's not a formality, it's, it's something that means money. And we recognize that and take it seriously. We thank you for taking that seriously as well. Uh, land leases, we always try to capture those, any type of leases, so thank you for sharing those with us. Uh, and uh, there's not a need for, uh, you guys aren't thinking about selling land or acquiring land, so uh, with that, um, I think that 
pretty well. Unless someone has something else to say in this section, uh, I'll go ahead and move on to the next. Uh, Troy, this is Tammy. Um, Amber, did you get that one change, the one prop, the one lease change that was to building instead of land? I can't see, yeah. so. Yes, ma'am, I did. Yes, ma I it did. is. Okay. Okay, that's all I was checking. We are getting feedback. <laughs> Okay, I can't tell what you're saying. Tammy, when you have your mic on, it's when it has double feedback. Just really be conscientious. You're talking. Got, gotcha. So property profiles, you guys have double checked those. Uh, those are as accurate as we can get them this year. Appreciate you doing that. Uh, district has reviewed, reviewed building leases and verifies accuracy. These can affect your uh, block grant payment because it has to do with if you have uh, qualifying educational programs in district-owned buildings, then that square footage can be. If ADM drives out the square footage that can cover it, uh, it can uh, affect the allowed square footage, which affects your, again, your major maintenance payment. So thank you for confirming those. Got quite a few of those. Uh, district has reviewed enhancements and verifies accuracy. This is important for us because we have to report this annually to the select committee. Uh, so thank you for that. So I think I'll put anything else on that question. If not, we'll move on. Uh, district appropriations update. So um, uh, no capital projects to report this time. And guys, I type this as we go. And if you see, uh, this is just going to be our final um, notes as well on top of yours, if you have any. So if you see something that needs to be added, just let me know or change. And then you did confirm, Charlie, uh, Paul Severson is not with us this morning. Is that correct? That's correct. Thank you. Okay, security. Bob, if you'd lead us in this. Yes, thank you. Um, just want to run across what we've got as far as security funding for the year projects by the state. The original funding was uh, done to, uh, with the 2014 House Enrolled Act number 50056 at $9 million. Funding uh, projects were defined by the 2015 Senate Enrolled Act number 80089. Uh, the current budget request, we have submitted that to the JAC. It's in a draft bill currently unnumbered and drafted on December of 2018. Fiscal year uh, 20 is $4.9 million proposed for additional security projects. Fiscal year 21 to 22, 10% of major maintenance for security has been discussed in the select committee to not be in fiscal year 21-22. Unlike 10% enhancements funds, continued 10% security major maintenance is not assured in the future. Over expanding security funds may be a district concern if funding is not continued into the next biennium. Uh, previous 10% security funding major maintenance on the 2016 House Enrolled Act number 0012 for fiscal year 17 to 18, a school district may expend up to 10% of the amount distributed under the major maintenance program for the period commencing July 21st, uh, excuse me, July 1st, rather, 2016 and ending July 1st, 2018 for safety and security building and facility needs. 2018 House Enrolled Act number 0062, fiscal year 19 to 20, a school district may expend up to 10% of the amount distributed under this program 
for the period commencing July 1st, 2018 and ending June 30th, 2020 for safety and security building and facility needs. District written request for CAPCON funding uh, revisions will be honored. Moving funds between project appropriations must be in writing and acknowledge no backfill funding. SFD will honor change agreements made by the SFD that are captured in the written record. And the goal of the security funding is intended to give each district an equal opportunity to provide consistent security standards for Wyoming K-12 schools, in, as noted in the October 2014 report. The School Facilities Commission and Select Committee for School Facilities have continued to identify concern with the slow deployment of funds. Other potential funds available to school districts are, are not SFD administered. Uh, points to note are Homeland Security funding, you can contact your local Department of Homeland Security for available funds. Um, DOJ and private grants available on an irregular basis. Regular district searches are advised. Upcoming security conferences and past security conferences. Uh, in October of 2017, we had one at the Ramada Inn Convention Center in Casper. March of 2018, we had uh, one at the Central Wyoming College in Riverton. October of 2018, Laramie County Community College in Cheyenne. And in 2019, we are planning to have uh, security conferences, or at least one, to my knowledge, but the date and locations are yet to be announced. We haven't gotten to that point yet. So with that in mind, uh, this, the district has been very good at expending all of their funds. I have the current report of the security projects and we have expended uh, together all of the funds that have been allocated for the district. So congratulations on doing a great job of getting your funds spent on projects. And with that, I'll turn it back over. I'm, I'm kind of disappointed you guys haven't spent that 29 cents yet. What's the deal? <laughs> <laughs> I know we. I was just talking to Brandon about yeah. the twenty-nine cents is left. <laughs> We're waiting uh, for you guys to send us a piece of bubble gum. Uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, uh, that's fine. Uh, school district. I was kind of curious if any of the three of you or anybody else from your school district uh, attended these security conferences. Yes, this is Coley Shadrick, and I've attended the last two years. Um, the one in October, so. Wonderful. I, I think they're excellent. I hope you got something out of them, and I hope we continue on them. Yeah, I would agree. That, you know, lots of great information. Um, you know, and I think the other thing is, is, you know, um, uh, we've worked very closely with our law enforcement in the county and in Glen Rock, and so this is just going to keep growing and growing. Hopefully the state will see it through, too. Um, so one thing we noticed that uh, your school district has over uh, expended the 10% security monies. So uh, we're not an enforcement agency. We're not out there to, to slap your hands or to enforce. Uh, that's not our job. Um, but we want to point out that you, as of uh, June 30th, you were 75,000 over expenditures. And again, just want to emphasize that these were one-time uh, uh, appropriations in 2018 and 17-18 uh, through session law. They were not part of the ongoing continual formula for major maintenance in state statute. Uh, and so uh, the bottom line is, and, and, uh, is that you have spent money that was authorized through the legislature to spend. Um, when we approve projects, uh, you probably know this, it's it's kind of like uh, giving your uh, teenager the credit card and they want to go to the movie. Uh, then they come back with a car uh, and you say you didn't have authority to spend that car because there's no money budgeted for that. And that's the same type of thing. Obviously not as severe as uh, uh, that. But um, so, so that $75,000 is a negative that there's no source of approved uh, legislative money to recover. At this point, it's out of your account. It, it's $75,000 thousand dollars that basically 
um, may stay there for perpetuity. So um, we just don't know. So uh, our, our, we did do a little, uh, uh, we talked to our attorneys and, and kind of came up with a, a statement here and, and we're encouraging you, highly encouraging you not to uh, overextend security money. It's uh, water under the bridge, but certainly do not continue down that road. And there is no avenue by which we have authoritatively to put money back in there uh, or to designate it, categorize it, because there's no no legislative uh, appropriation to allow that through session law. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So, if, uh, and we don't have to go beyond that. We just wanted to make sure that you knew. And then I just wanted to make sure too uh, that that uh, you clearly understood through Bob's information that we're hoping through this legislation coming up, and 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 Brandon will cover that, but. But uh, there's some there, there's a possibility that you know your money in the future and he'll talk about that can be applied to any 20 of those elements. Uh, so that's another uh, uh, method that we're looking at. So uh, anything else on security? Anybody want to talk about? Okay. Uh, capacity then, uh, Charlie does just a fantastic job at ca capacity analysis for, with our data. This stuff is uh, important because uh, it has to do uh, with how you, I mean, it, it does impact uh, your major maintenance payments, of course, enrollment, as well as if there are any uh, upcoming um, uh, uh, capacity concerns, we can kind of get those on the front end and talk about them and make sure that we're not behind the eight ball. Uh, so uh, with that, then, you guys are uh, in, in reality looking real good. I mean, you've got space to go. Uh, the, the challenge with you, uh, of course, is that your your, your uh, enrollment is low enough where major maintenance is is it, you could have a lot more major maintenance if you had full schools. Uh, but uh, that's the way it is, and I know you guys are trying to use that as wise as you can, but. Uh, enrollment wise, um, these are just in, these enrollment projections or mathematical computations. That's all they are. Uh, you know, we had, I, I said the other day to some school district where we, we were trying to right size lingo when we replaced their school. It showed like in 10 years they were going to be a zero population. Well, lingo is an agricultural community. I don't think so. So uh, it's based on 10 years of, of, of trailing data and then it projects it out for about 10 more years. Uh, and you guys, one thing that's always nice, and that's kind of small, I hope you can see it. Let me make that a little bit larger for you. Is that okay? Can you guys see that? Yeah. Uh, with that, then, you guys are, you know, you're usually in the 40s, you kind of came up in the 50s, 60s, and then you drop back down. And and you're, you're, you're maintaining in the 40s, give or take. Uh, some years a little more, you got bumper crops some years, and some years not. So that's good. How these uh, enrollment projections work, and, and I, I try not to assume people know, know this, but uh, it's a survival rate. So you go from kindergarten uh, one year, and then it kind of stair steps down. Here's the, that kindergarten in first grade, second grade, third grade, so on. And each of these kindergarten classes are just, uh, you know, we see the actual enrollment each year. And then what happens then, this survival rate here is it's an average, you take uh, 2008, Kindergarten class, that's 2009, we compare that survival rate with next year's and next year's, and we do 10 years of, of survival rates between those classes, those two transitions, kindergarten first, uh, one transition, and you guys are retaining, over the last 10 years, you're retaining 100% of your kindergartners to first grade on average. So that's wonderful. You guys drop a little bit, I can't read that, I think it's probably a 98. In second grade, you lose, but uh, of those uh, students, you retain 100% and you don't lose any more. You drop down a little bit more. Uh, when you get closer to the upper elementary, junior high, you're actually picking up students. Don't know why, but you are. Uh, and then uh, in eighth grade, you lose them. And then in ninth grade, you're, you're picking them up again. You're actually gaining 4% uh, over the aver average 10 years. And then uh, you guys, uh, sophomore year usually is hit pretty hard by school districts. You guys seem to uh, not have that issue over time. And then, of course, you guys uh, have a loss there your junior year. And then your senior year, you rebound just a little bit. Perhaps someone steps out and then steps back in to get, get their uh, graduation. Um, so anything else? Uh, so you guys are pretty stable, it looks like, for the most part. Not 
not tremendously. If you look down here on this K-12 number, you guys are, uh, you know, are, are uh, I know you dropped down from the 600s and, and kind of are now into the 500s, but no dramatic changes at all. Well, what do you guys think about that? Um, is it a gas or oil field north of you? Do you think that's going to have an impact on you? You know, I was just going to make a comment that we're already – um i think we're up over just a couple kids over 600 right now so you know two years ago we were down 576 and i think we're up 27 28 kids so you know it's having a huge impact on us right now we just keep gaining kids we had eight over the christmas break wow that's good yeah so yeah. hopefully i don't know how long it'll stay but you know, according to that graph, you know, we're kind of back, we're back right over the 600. Um, and just want to make a note that we did start a preschool and, you know, we've got 54 kids in our elementary school that we're not obviously getting funding for, but, you know, that's, we've got about 600 and I would say 60 kids district wide right now. Troy, you're putting in that in information in on the charter schools. You need to move. I was just testing you, Amber, see if you were paying attention. <laughs> nice. You know, I'm all over the spelling and function <laughs> And is that, that's an oil field, right? An oil field development, or what is that? For the, for the arrays of enrollment? Yeah, I mean, uh, north of you, though, the oil, uh, the oil activity. What is that? Is that a... And I think it's, is it oil and gas, Shane? Is that what it is? Jane says, yep. Oil and gas is being developed. Oil and gas is being developed. I'm trying to turn it off, dude. I'll say something like that. Thank you, Amber, for pointing out that I went too far down. No worries. Um, I got gotcha. you. Um, well, congratulations, guys. I hope you continue to grow. Each of those students, uh, you know, it varies from district to district, but give or take 15000 uh, uh per student, and it allows you to have more resources financially to meet the needs of those students district-wide. So uh, we'll, we'll hope that that continues to grow for you guys. Uh, our statewide capacity list, we show this every year. Um, there are, there are uh, capacity concerns and issues across the state. So uh, we just kind of take uh, in certain grade configurations. You're, you're not in there, and uh, hopefully someday you will be. Uh, but uh, there, these are some uh, known capacity concerns. Uh, some, are, some, some of these known capacity concerns have non-construction alternatives like Casper to mothballed elementary schools and to don't reopen those elementary schools if they so chose. So uh, those are those are things that we talk with school districts on, of course, and monitor along the way. And uh, just because you're ranked at the top doesn't necessarily mean you get money uh, appropri uh, appropriated or request for that, uh, depending on the circumstance. Okay, anything else on capacity anybody else want to say? Otherwise, I'll go down to charter school. Charter schools. You have no charter schools. Okay, that was good. <laughs> that was easy. That was easy. Oh, that was easy. Uh, condition. Um, you guys, I, I think you're familiar, uh, and I could certainly go into it, but there's there's a there's rhyme and reason for why we do what we do and how we do it with regard to condition and measuring condition in your in your school buildings, and we do that every four years, and we're going to be talking about that in just a moment. So this is just uh, what condition scores mean and how we actually, uh, or how our uh, third party consultants actually calculate the deferred maintenance and comes up with the scores that represent your building. Statewide, we always just like to show this. Uh, and I, I didn't recall seeing you guys in the top 30 or so, but uh, we do have a list that uh, takes the worst building and state down and it just kind of progresses down 500 lines or so 500 buildings give or take and uh, we just show the first page and 
move on from there. And this is this is support facilities also, and I do not believe you're on the first page as well, but uh, uh, you're on that list somewhere down below. Hey, scroll, uh, here is, scroll back up. Ahead. I was just wondering if you yeah. could scroll back. Okay, got it. Thank you. Thank you. You betcha. Uh, here are your educational facilities, just uh, uh, as your worst building, the best. And to be honest with your with you, the worst building is really, really good. <laughs> uh, you've got really good scores. You don't have uh, poor buildings, uh, and uh, so you guys are in good shape with regard to your uh, facilities and their condition. Not to say you don't have challenges at each one, but uh, overall they look really good. Support facilities, same thing. They're looking real well. Uh, anything else to say on condition assessments at all? I'm just going to say district buildings are in relatively uh, good shape. I'll just say that. Say that. This is Brandon. Shane, do you have any type of computerized system that you're tracking all these? Because all your scores are pretty good. Yes, if we have any kind of electronic computerized system for tracking maintenance. Yeah, for like work orders and work orders and Coley's looking into that, but we don't have it right now. So this is Coley. We've been looking at, you know, just being more efficient. Um, you know, we use Long uh, right now, and so we're looking at a product from them to, you know, get an electronic work order system as well as technology, but nothing Shane's just you know he, he's just all over the place making sure things are great right now well okay major maintenance let's go down to that uh your your work orders in our aim database are uh the statuses are updated we appreciate that we do that annually it's more of a housekeeping thing but it's important uh and uh thank you bob for uh just reviewing all the middle staff for work orders. Um, I think we've pretty well talked about your major maintenance balances and stuff. Uh, and if are there any questions with regard to what any of these balances are? 8%, you don't have any. 10%, uh, there's a little bit more uh, uh, statutory freedom to use that on things that uh, it still has to qualify for major maintenance. Things like teachers and I don't know, football field lights and things that uh, we normally don't cover under regular major maintenance. Uh, and then 10% uh, and then securities, we've already talked about that deficit. So anything else we need to talk about on major maintenance balances? All right. And then we usually each year just uh, look at your previous years through the 680 report that uh, is submitted each year on June 30th or after June 30th. Uh, these were your priorities uh, as of last year, uh, the last fiscal year, and uh, so we just kind of have those recorded as a, a part of your facility plan. Uh, and then it just breaks it down not only from highest expenditure to lowest for categories, but also building by building. Uh, district, anything else we need to know about your major maintenance in any way, shape, or form? Try go ahead and scroll down to the notes. There was a couple of items here. Just about the windows. Mm -hmm. About the windows, the air conditioning, and the restrooms. Windows, the intermediate school. This we like to discuss the air conditioning. You need to understand. Uh, uh, Tammy, would you like to elaborate on these two? Yeah, um, the one with the windows for the intermediate school, and Cola, you can interject here. 
we have um, had studies done on the windows at the intermediate school in the past. I think it goes back to, you know, what years? 15, 15, 16 or something. Um, we had studies done on it. And we went out to bid. Originally, we went out with windows alone and the bids came back so high that that was when Kirk was here. We decided not to do it because it was so high. Then they added the doors to it and went out to bid and it was still too high. So then we had the doors taken care of with the security. Um, you know, with some of our security money, that's how that got taken care of. But the windows at the intermediate still need to be taken care of. Um, but we were just wondering whether or not that could be added as a capital component um, or just a capital project it, because that's always came out so high. And, and what your guys' thoughts are on that. Gotcha. So, so due to the cost, you'd like to ask for a component project. One, one of the things we're going to need to do on that is uh, take a look at that proposal that you sent in to us. It's got the whole shopping list for all of the uh, projects you wanted to get done at that school. If we're going to identify the windows as a component project or a major maintenance project, so it needs to be segregated out of that proposal. So we have an accurate amount for the windows by themselves, if that's what the request is. Are, are you getting, are, Tammy, are you getting these notes that I put in on these major maintenance, maintenance yeah. items? Okay. Items? Yep. Okay. Yeah, because I've had a couple sitting in there since uh, basically uh, December 18th that I haven't specifically seen a response on unless I've missed it. So as okay, far as so process, we were just we were waiting to talk to about it at the this meeting. Okay. And the, the other the other one that you had in there specifically was for the IT room air conditioning. I think that uh, he has added a specific section that states uh um it's not in troy's version but what it is is it um so <clears throat> we did get an ag's opinion on the term upgrade um that we will post into the facility plan itself um but basically what what was said in that was that the term upgrade was not meant for new or systems we put in or systems that did not exist just a clarification on that and currently there's no so there's, there's no there's go ahead Tammy. so is that for any project in major maintenance is that what we're saying anything for major maintenance dollars can't be something new it's got to be for something that already exists for repair or an upgrade that is correct That's correct that is correct correct okay then after that you can use major maintenance money? Yes, if the system has been, then if something goes wrong with it, then you can apply for major maintenance. But if it's if it's an enhancement, by, that portion of the work is always on the district's dime. It has to be part of a, a project that's done under CapCon or uh, other ad addition to a building. It's not for something that's added as an enhancement by the district. Does that does that make sense? So obviously a windows project would be something I mean, that's it's our oldest building. Those are, you know, obviously the longer we wait, the worse it gets and probably the more expensive. So what is that timeline on the component funding? So Troy, let's go down to the list here and look at it when you get a chance. Yeah, I was, I was uh, looking for the, um, I wanted to bring this up real quick because Charlie mentioned it and then we'll go down to that list. Okay. Uh, we were talking about the AG's opinion. I think this was sent to superintendents in the past year, June 29th. 
but anyway, uh, for air conditioning, then to if you, it's non-existent, you want to add it. What Charlie was talking about is the question, basically. Uh, let me look up here for a second. Does the inclusion of the term upgrade uh, in these categories, okay, upgrade as in, let's look at the original house bill. While the act retains the definition of major and creates two new subcategories, site and system improvement, uh, the definition of both site and system improvements includes repair and replacement or upgrade, so that was added in the state, uh, into the state statute of the school district and components equipment. Does the inclusion of the term upgrade in these subcategories permit school districts to install new systems such as air conditioning in a facility currently lacks it or change the use of an existing system? So uh, changing out like a heating system and then adding air conditioning to it. And the short answer is no, the addition of term upgrade in the definition of major maintenance does not permit school districts to use major maintenance uh, uh, funds to install new systems. So there you go. So anyway, we just want to make sure, sure we show that to you from the AG's uh, opinion there. So before we go on and, and uh, talk about the windows or continue to do that, I'm just going to put uh, AG. Opinion dated. Well. I'll say as reported on June 29th, Okay, sorry about that. I just want to make sure we captured it. Uh, so back to the windows. And what was the question? Well, basically that, you know, I think, you know, everybody on, you know, in the meeting today recognizes that even for a 1968 building, it's in great shape. But you know, a lot of our windows in this older building are not operable. They can't open. Um, so, you know, every year that goes by, it's going to get more more expensive. So if we do look at like a component funding option for this, what is that timeline for us to get that in? And, um, you know, I, I think this is just something that, you know, it's just never going to go away. And we need to look at the best opportunity to, you know, get this replaced to keep the condition of our building great. Sure. So, um, uh, and you guys probably participated, but uh, we, we basically, hopefully I didn't just lose what I just had. Uh, we basically, um, uh, that's interesting. <laughs> if I lost it, I'll cry. pretty good at saving. Okay, so uh, the answer is that we, every two years you have the opportunity to submit a component level project and the definition of a component level project is to supplement major maintenance if you don't have enough. So you, you guys have already apparently went out, designed, bid, the windows and stuff. So the next opportunity you have and uh, which is what we're going to talk about here in just a few minutes, uh, the next the next opportunity you'll have uh, basically to go out for component projects is uh, for the next, not this biennium, but the following biennium. So in 2018, we allowed districts, we gave them about a, a 10 months to submit this, these kinds of projects. And, and of course we did training and all that stuff and, uh, and all the districts were invited to participate in that. So the next time around will be 2020 and that will prepare us for the next, uh, for the 2000, what, 23, 24 biennium budget. So your right. next opportunity for that is 2020. And then the appropriation for that would not be realized 
uh, until what, uh, July 1 of 2022. I yeah, yeah, correct. Coley, this is Bob Herzog. If I could interject something just for a moment here. If you have totally inoperable windows, they can be done on a piecemeal basis through major maintenance because that is an existing system. So that can be the, the caveat on component projects is that first of all, they have to, to uh, be uh, qualify as major maintenance projects. So you don't have to go for the whole nine yards. If you've got ones that are totally inoperable right now, we can take care of those through your major maintenance monies. So just wanted to make sure that the district understands that. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, <laughs> any other discussions on major maintenance? That we'll move on. Well, low condition scores, uh, so it's really important each year we get uh, legislative questions, are school districts spending money on their highest needs? Well, highest needs is defined as lowest condition scores. You guys uh, don't have a lot of twos, there are some twos, uh, and you've, I think, responded uh, to those, and we do appreciate it. So, um, uh, so you, and we put three condition scores, which would mean good. Three means good condition, uh, and we've actually added those to your facility plan because you guys are the star pupils and you, you've got the gold stars because you have very few low or poor, uh, poor or failing uh, systems. And it looks like each of the ones that uh, are low and failing, poor and failing, uh, you guys have uh, uh, pretty well talked about and addressed in some way, shape, or form or have identified at least in some way, shape, or form, a timeline in which you're going to address that. And so we just let this speak for itself. Uh, and if we have a, any legislator or the governor's office or whoever wants this information who has authority to do so uh, uh, and review it, we would provide that to them and let you speak for yourself instead of us speaking on your behalf. So thank you for doing that. Any questions on that? Okay, we talked about what those scores mean, um, and so uh, there is an upcoming statewide condition assessment, and we've included that within this uh, facility plan so that you know it's coming. Uh, it's really important, and I don't know if you guys in the last one, we've, we've changed a lot of things in these. One is we provide really, uh, we're giving you right now a, an understanding that starting next year, we're going to go out and start developing our scope. Uh, and actually this year, later this year, uh, we're going to uh, basically procure a, a professional to go out and do our next condition assessment. Uh, and then uh, the following year, next year, then those condition con assessments will occur across the state and we'll update all the data for your information for your buildings for condition. Uh, important parts here that is really important for you guys. Uh, and that is that uh, there is training of districts and uh, state and our state construction staff. Uh, we actually train everybody. We usually do that in Casper. Uh, it's uh, uh, somewhere around April, April 1st or so, and we'll we'll define that uh, specific time where we actually invite the districts over for about a four-hour meeting in Casper, and we go through the assessment so that anybody can ask questions. We talk about the importance of your involvement in those assessments because uh, as a district, you want those assessments as accurate as possible because they mean money down the road or lack thereof. Uh, and then, of course, we want them, we want them accurate because we want uh, our state to understand uh, the inventory that uh, they have a responsibility to take care of uh, from a financial point of view. Uh, so anyway, that'll be done uh, in a couple of years and we'll have a whole new uh, uh, updated database for condition and then we'll just continue to progress uh, through the years as we normally do to take care of building. You were talking about the component projects. Again, we gave uh, district about 10 months this last year to, to look through and submit those. Those have gone through. We had a committee that uh, was made up of district representatives across the state from all four regions. We try to always our superintendents, business managers, and facility managers 
uh, and uh, Coley, we're, we're, we're confident that you're going to volunteer for the next committee. Yeah, no, I, uh, I'm i in. Is there Great. a conflict that if I, if I volunteer, I can't get the component funding? No, not at all. Uh, we've had, well, we don't limit it to that, and uh, we would sure love to have you on that. And uh, it would allow you to get really familiar with the process and, and see how these things are ranked. So uh, anyway, just keep that in mind next time we have component uh, 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 committee and we're uh, soliciting uh, volunteers. It's a great opportunity for your district to become very aware of other resources to take care of your buildings with regard to capital funds. Yep, I, I appreciate that. So this is the proposed list from that committee and there's a total of uh, 31 projects. Uh, and uh, let's say uh, our director uh, and Brandon work with the governor's office and with uh, legislative leaders uh, and they kind of uh, tell us uh, how much to ask for in each category at times. Uh, and so if they say, hey, next next biennium you can ask for 10 million, then all we do is go down this list and see a cumulative amount. And we could ask down to number four and get 6.6 because .6 that uh, we don't have enough uh, anything else under 10. If they said 15, we could actually move down to number seven. So you can see uh, as you work down through these and look at these, there's HVAC in there. Of course, that's that's HVAC that is uh, uh, basically existing and they're, they're replacing or repairing, usually replacement. We have done interior doors, exterior doors. We have done windows. Here's an exterior window. That one didn't score very high, uh, but it just matters how you fill out those sheets and, and what the uh, balance of your major maintenance and stuff is. So that's that list that's uh, going to be under consideration in March. Any other questions about component funding or uh, anything with regard to condition scores? Brandon, legislative session review. Okay, so district, a little bit about where we're at with the legislative session and some of the bills that would affect the districts. Uh, the first one that we have is House Bill 8. It's uh, the major maintenance multiplier. So this one would be an increase. Um, and we, we do is, or what they would do is adjust the uh, factor from a 2% CRV to 2.5%. So that would be a, a positive uh, adjustment. It wouldn't come in effect until um fiscal year 2023 but you'd have an increase in your major maintenance payment the next one is uh public works and contracts on house bill 52 um if you're going to be doing any procurement this would for ff and e uh this would have an effect uh what we'd have to do is make sure that the specifications are written in a way to um make sure that Wyoming vendors uh, can provide the products that are being bid. House Bill 65, um, the state's really got a push and they've got a statute, which is 9-2-3004, to create a standardized procurement uh, policies and procedures throughout the state. Uh, in doing so, they've got several uh, adjustments in this bill. Uh, the bonding value is currently at $7,500. They're gonna increase that to 50,000. Uh, professional service provider procurements currently uh, zero to 25. You can select somebody 25 and above. You have to do a procurement. That value would then go to 50,000 as well to match the bonding. Uh, advertisement is uh, a little bit around the board. Sometimes in 213110, which is the school districts, it's one week on the when you're hiring an architect. It's four weeks on the state side. They're going to just make that a standard minimum of two weeks across the board. So the whole ultimate goal is to streamline some of the um, procurement processes as well as change those values uh, to about $50,000 across the board, which you know a lot of those statutes haven't been adjusted in 30 plus years. So uh, it's a present value adjustment in today's dollars. Senate file 57 talks about public records. Uh, if you guys get a public records request, you got 10 days upon the date of the receipt of the request. 
Um, and then they have some penalties, which are as stiff as a felony if those uh, public records are not delivered. Uh, county zoning authorities on private schools, this probably wouldn't affect you, but if you did have a private school coming in, it's uh, allowing them to operate in a similar fashion as a public school. One of the other ones, Tammy, that uh, could definitely affect you, I haven't got it loaded here, is, um, let's see, Education House Bill 78. And what this is, is it's a major maintenance funding. Uh, currently, you're getting your major maintenance payments 75% in July. The last 25% comes in September. This bill is proposing to take that and make quarterly payments throughout the year. So that would have a, an effect on you. And Senate File 64 is school safety and security. Uh, it's directed to WDE, Homeland Security, State Construction Department, and it's to create standards, guidelines for school security. And that could have an effect on you as well. So those are the ones that are uh, major at this point. Any questions or thoughts on those? I just have one question. I was reading those this morning actually, and the changes that they're making on those dollar amounts above that you were talking about for procurement, yeah. is that just yeah. to do with major maintenance and capital construction or is that our general fund too? Uh, it's it's uh, for it's procurement, a professional it's service provider contractor. Provider contractor. And it's going to deal with capital construction. Okay. So capital that's what I thought, but I just wanted to. Okay. I just wanted to clarify, make sure that's what I understood it as, but I wanted to make sure I was correct in my thinking. Yeah, when we started looking at right, and if you look at that statute that's on the screen, 92 3004. When we started looking and creating the policies and standards, they're just all over the board. And then we looked at the when they were written. When I say all over the board, the dollar values were uh, they all didn't they didn't reconcile. So we're the state construction department. We have construction management and school facilities. Well, each of them had their own dollar values. So then when we dug in a little deeper, not only were the dollar values different, but they're 30 plus. Some of them are 40 years old when they were written. So you know, we just wanted to get those adjusted to a higher value. Hopefully districts can streamline their processes. Uh, the procurement process is less cumbersome, a little quicker to get projects out the door. And if you have an as needed contract uh, with some of your professional service provider, if it's under 50,000, you can just work with them directly. Um, and in that statute, there's a three tier, -tier process, zero to 25, you can just pick somebody uh, 25 to 50, you get some proposals, and then 50,000 and greater, you have to do the more formal interview and stuff. And right now, that that value is at 25. Right now, that, it would help. It would help. I totally agree because it doesn't take any project now to be 25 or over when you're doing anything with major maintenance or even general fund money. When you're doing anything with your buildings, 25,000 comes really easy. <laughs> exactly. And if you do look in there, there's a section and it's 21.3.1.10 and it segregates the purchase of insurance, materials and supplies and, and textbooks. So that would stay the same. The focus here was, you know, if you buy, $50,000 of textbooks, that might be a lot of textbooks and paper, but when you get in the construction world, you just moved onto the site sometimes and bought some materials. You haven't even got some work done yet. So a little different uh, caveat. Little with different, uh, caveat with yeah, exactly. I'm glad that they're, they're, they're taking maintenance and, and building things separate from the supplies and materials because you're exactly right. Yep. Hey Brandon, uh, one recommendation maybe in our uh, for uh, next week's facility plan to add that 213-110 and just a, a brief explanation of what it doesn't include, if that's okay. Yeah, it's all in House Bill 65. Okay. All right. I can talk. Uh, to and then the, uh, supplemental the other budget. Thing, next. Yeah. So this one, the actual budget is House Bill 80, School Capital Construction Supplemental Budget. These are the projects that are currently in the build. Um, 
Sweetwater has the alternative high or the satellite high school. It's made it all the way through. You got Sheridan two with John C. Schiffer. Uh, there's a reappropriations for a modular. It's a ranch school, and uh, they had some other funds, and we'd reappropriate that to get a new school for those ranch kids. Uh, we got a Montessori that's a charter school lease. Some unanticipated for some capital construction uh, contingencies there. The two that would affect you is that security projects. So earlier when you looked and saw that you overspent, those what when they did that 10% out of um, the major maintenance to allow the, the security funds uh, to spend out of 10% of your major maintenance to spend on security, those are essentially one-time deals. That's when the market turned south and they didn't have a lot of revenue, so they wanted to allow school districts to keep moving forward. The intent here is to stop that process, increase your major maintenance uh, so you're fully funded and we're not diluting your major maintenance payment and go and ask for capital construction funding so you have money for security projects. And that's what this 4.9 million is. So you get a, a derivative check out of this appropriations. And as well as that, you'd be able to spend it on any of the 20 elements. So in the past, it was written where it was really rigid. You could only spend it on, I think, eight elements. Now you'll be able to open it up and, and put the money where you see is best fit for your schools. And then major maintenance. Um, when we ran the calculations, the RS means number went up. Uh, and you would uh, be a little bit of an increase there as well in your major maintenance payment. So we had to go ask for another million dollars. And then the past charter school, that's another uh, charter school here in Laramie One, and that's a lease payment as well. Okay, thank you, Brandon. <coughs> yep. So budget requests. Um, so obviously these facility plans are also for planning for uh, what we're going to request uh, based on state statute, rules and regs, or commission's rules and regs, what qualifies and what doesn't. Something that has changed and uh, uh, in our rules and regulations, it hasn't changed. It's, it's uh, just uh, definitely uh, uh, will be followed by us uh, unless the state legislature changes statute um, is we've had these capacity lists that stood on its own and was prioritized and we were making requests based on that list of highest on that list of highest Troy we lost you for a bunch there we don't know what you've been said okay can you hear me now can you hear me now yes uh, in the past we've had standalone capacity lists that appropriation requests were based on because it was prioritized uh, and then we have a we've had had a standalone condition list that priorities were based on for appropriation requests and then um, the legislature has been dealing with educational suitability when major capital projects were generated off of either of those lists and educational suitability within those buildings was also addressed through capital funds that is not the case anymore. So what we're doing, and uh, according to state statute, is we're combining condition and the the, the uh, score of the building uh, plus the capacity, probably of the district, but perhaps of the building. But I don't think so. It's probably going to end up being a district capacity for a great configuration level, and then uh, educational suitability. Uh, and we do have a 2010 educational suitability scores for most buildings, but not all in the state. And then we would weight those three categories by 50% of weighting would go to condition, 35% capacity, and 15% educational suitability, and would produce a composite score. And then those buildings across the state would be prioritized according to highest composite score to lowest. So uh, we really don't know what that list looks like right now. We haven't applied this, uh, and uh, we but we will work uh, internally. And when we get a new director, we will come up with uh, a methodology that will be ran through the commission. I'm sure several times before adopted, uh, and uh, go through public scrutiny as well. And so that's kind of the new 
new law of the land with regard to prioritizing project requests to the commission and to the legislature. Any questions on that? So looking at your buildings on both condition and capacity, we do not see any uh, potential or, and you did not, uh, uh, weren't able to take uh, advantage of the uh, component level um, uh, request this year. So we do not see any capital requests coming from you. Uh, and so that's what I'm gonna put. Uh, any input from the district or Brandon on that? No, I concur with you. I, I didn't see anything that stood out. District, did you? Am I, I might have missed. No, not at this time. Okay. So yeah, we really encourage you guys to take advantage of that uh, component uh, funding in the future, and uh, and we're certainly uh, here to help you do that. So look forward to that. Uh, lastly, to close before we close out the meeting, uh, is there something unique issues, ideas, concerns that we have not discussed that the district would like to bring up at this time before closing out the meeting? Okay, I don't hear anything. Staff, anything else that we need to talk about? I don't have anything. Do you remember? This is Brandon. The only question I have is how much is those windows? Uh, the project that's in there right now? Yeah, just the window. Just we haven't been able to segregate it, but hang on just a second. Let me take a look at the. We had an invo or a proposal in there for work. This is dated 2017, so we'll obviously take this with a grain of salt here. Sure. Um, Hold on, just dump me out of here. Do we have that proposal, Tammy or Shane? Um, I think I have records of it. We can go back to our board minute meeting you know, with a tabulation and go find out what, or GSG would know, because yep. GSG is the one that went out to bid for us, and I know it was really high. I, I just don't remember the dollar amount, but it was actually yeah. in like 2015 that Windows alone were went out to bid. You're right. It's December. December. Right. December. Yeah, I think that's it. Looking at the windows themselves, um, we got 124,000, 100,000. Just looking on the exterior windows, we had about $300,000 identified for windows. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, that's quite a bit of money. Yeah, that's quite a bit of money. Yeah, that's what I'm remembering is it was around 300,000 or more. Okay, any other questions or comments? Okay, with that, school district, thank you so much for joining us. I uh, want to acknowledge also my appreciation of my staff. Uh, these guys do an outstanding job in each of their roles. Uh, and, uh, we look forward to working with you in the future. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll get around there someday, guys. We'll come over uh, maybe next summer or, or uh, soon. I try to get out to all the school districts I, uh, and also our planning team and Brandon. Uh, and hopefully we can get a tour of your district and, and uh, see all your facilities and just uh, have a face-to-face -face discussion. Would that be uh, appropriate? We would enjoy it, and you guys are welcome anytime. Very good. Okay. Guys, with that, then, Charlie, if you'll end our meeting. And uh, by the way, this is going to be posted on YouTube, and when you have sleep apnea between midnight and 6 in the morning, you could watch it. <laughs> Okay, take care. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.